Okay, uh, hello everybody and uh, welcome to my talk today. So today I'm going to be talking about um, a new project in Apache called Apache Syncope and I'm going to be talking about how uh, we're using Apache CXF with Syncope in new and interesting ways. Okay, so the agenda for the talk today, um, I'm going to give an, introdu an introduction to Apache Syncope. Um, I'm going to talk about the features and architecture uh, of Syncope, what kind of stuff it does, what problems it solves. Um, it's going to be quite a hands-on kind of talk. I'm going to give a demo about how you might use Syncope in a real-world deployment, because um, sometimes it's easier to understand what a project actually does when you see it in action. I'm then going to talk about uh, a new release, which is coming up, called Syncope 1.1, and uh, how this new release integrates the Apache CXF project. And then finally, if I have time, I'll just do a very quick demo uh, of how you can use CXF with Syncope. OK, so a few words about myself, first of all. Um, so as the Apache logo up there indicates, um, I'm involved with a number of Apache projects. Um, so apart from Syncope, um, I'm on the PMC of the Web Services project. I'm on the PMC of the Apache CXF project, and I'm on the PMC, I'm the PMC chair of Apache Santuario, which is the XML security project in Apache. Uh, so in general, I'm interested in security. <laughs> um, cryptography as well. Um, I have a PhD in the area of computational uh, cryptography, and I work for Talent. Um, I'm based out of Dublin, Ireland. Okay, so Apache Syncope is an identity management uh, product. Um, so it's probably best to start off with kind of a definition about what identity management actually is. I'm not going to get too technical. So here I've described it as just managing user data and systems and applications. Um, so maybe it's best to visualize a, uh, a kind of a visualize what your what problem you're actually trying to solve. Um, so let's see, for example, your you're a large organization and you've got multiple um, identity backends. So you could have some directories, Active Directory, maybe an Apache DS install. You've got some databases. Um, so you've all got, you've got different silos for uh, identities and you want to kind of centralize them into a co coherent uh, whole um, so that you can manage them in a simple way and expose them to external applications. So this is the kind of um, problem that uh, Apache Syncope solves. So I've defined it here as an open source system for managing digital identities. Um, OK. So here's a brief pictorial history of the uh, Syncope project at Apache. Um, it was donated to the Apache incubator by a company called Terrassa, an Italian company, um, a startup founded by another ASF member called Francesco Cicciarito. Um, Benson gave a great talk this morning about the Apache Incubator and um, how it helps to basically grow communities and make sure that all the legal requirements are set for Apache projects and so on and so forth. Um, I came on board as a mentor in the Incubator um, along with a number of other employees from Talend um, and we also have some other PMC members from uh, a company called Everett. Um, so Syncope entered the incubator in February of last year and it exited as a full top level project um, in November. So I think as things go, that's a pretty successful um, nine month period in, in the incubator. Uh, currently we've got, I think, four PMC members from Terrassa, two from Everett and three from Talent. So I think it's a reasonably diverse uh, project. Um, we had a 1.0 to 0 release in the incubator and a couple of minor releases after that. And we're currently working towards a new major release 1.1, uh, which I'll describe in a, in a few slides. Okay, so here's a picture of uh, kind of architecture functionality that Syncope offers. Um, so Syncope, at the moment, it consists of two components, um, a, a core and a console. So this slide here describes the core. Um, it, con it contains a number, a number of different components. So we've got uh, user data, you might call, so this part here. So this concerns with um, attributes that describe users' roles, um, various policies associated with maybe account policies, password policies, um, auditing policies, so on and so forth. Um, this kind of internal data uh, is backed by a number of different components. So we have a workflow engine, 
so at the moment you can plug in a, a, a number of different workflow engines, but we ship with activity. Uh, we have a scheduler, uh, which is the quartz scheduler for scheduling events. We have some business intelligence uh, functionality, so we can audit different kinds of events. So let's say you want to uh, email the administrator when somebody logs on or some kind of authentication event. Um, and then we have a, a, a number of connectors. So con I'll describe connectors in a, in a bit more detail in a few slides, but connectors is basically how we talk to backend resources. So all of this internal data is persisted um, to uh, some storage uh, using the Apache Open JPA project. And the core exposes this functionality via a REST API up here. Um, and so basically we can expose all this user and role information to third party applications. Um, and the administration console also interacts with the core via the REST API. Okay, just so a, a few more details about some of the functionality. So here's an example of a workflow, a BPM uh, diagram. So basically you can upload a BPM file to uh, Syncope and use it to, manager, to manage the uh, user lifecycle. So this is an example on our wiki of how uh, to dealing with kind of user creation. So you start up here and we create a new user. Um, if you have a certain role, so uh, you can approve the user. So you can reject the user where it goes into the rejected state, it's deleted. Otherwise, the user can be activated. And depending on a number of different things, you can suspend the user and so on and so forth. Um, so this gives a, a kind of a good way of managing uh, users in Syncope. Okay, so I described connectors. So connectors are used to uh, talk to backend uh, resources. So there's two key uh, concepts in Syncope, that of propagation and synchronization. So if you create, uh, say, a new user or a new role in Syncope, you can propagate it to a backend resource. And uh, conversely, you can also synchronize information in. Uh, so if you want to import users from a number of different backend resources, uh, you synchronize uh, the user in. So the connectors, um, this is a project. Um, so the plug in the middle, it's a con ID. It's not an Apache project. Um, I think it used to be a Sun uh, product, which is open sourced. Um, there's a number of different connectors that you can plug into Syncope. So for example, we have connectors for databases, um, directories, Active Directory, Google Apps, et cetera, et cetera. And the, I described how the internal data in Syncope is persisted. Um, so we use Apache Open JPA. Um, and then we support a wide number of databases, all the various arrows here. In the demo I'm going to be doing in a minute, I'm going to do, uh, use it with MySQL. Um, and then finally, uh, you have to deploy Syncope. It's the core and the console are web applications, so you can, we support a number of other standard containers, Tomcat, JBoss, Glassfish, Oracle, uh, WebLogic, etc. So as I said, the core functionality is exposed by the REST API. So here's a very simple example. So a GET request for users, and this returns a list of all the users. So basically, these are user attributes for a particular user. Uh, so this is a very powerful way of exposing functionality, um, as we'll see in a few minutes. Uh, the console um, is a kind of a way of managing the core via a web interface uh, uses Apache Wicket. And as I said earlier, it communicates with the core via REST. OK, so I said this was going to be hands-on. So this is um, a demo I'm going to show of Syncope. Um, it's maybe slightly complicated, but um, it shows how you might use it in a kind of a real-world deployment. Um, so I'm going to deploy Syncope in Apache Tomcat. Um, internal storage is going to be persisted to MySQL. And in this scenario, we have got two backend silos, uh, you know, identity silos that we want to essentially import into Syncope. Um, I have a database uh, based on Apache Derby, and I've got a directory uh, which, is an active, uh, which is an Apache DS instance. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start a script to uh, start MySQL, which is used for internal storage. Okay, so while it's starting, 
Okay, so I've got a, a Syncope project uh, already defined. So basically, if you want to start with Syncope, um, you, you start with a Maven archetype, which creates a new project shell for you. And then you, conf you configure it in whatever way you want. So, um, and then you, you package this up and you deploy it in your container. So I've already, I've already done this. So I'm going to go into my Apache Tomcat instance and start up uh, Tomcat. And I'm, I'm using two connector bundles. So I've got these predefined for a database and an LDAP backend. OK, so while uh, Tomcat is starting up, I'm just going to log into MySQL uh, just to give you an example of what the persisted data actually looks like. OK, so I set this up already just so that I wouldn't have to be configuring a load of stuff when I load up Syncope. So you can see there's a Syncope uh, database uh, here. So So let's just have a look at the tables in the database. So you can see that it's kind of a wide range of stuff in here. Um, so like all the tables beginning with quartz refer to the, um, the quartz scheduler. Um, I've got various schema attributes and so on and so forth. Um, so if we just look at the Syncope user, Okay, so you see this is empty because I haven't imported any users into Syncope yet. So I'm going to check that uh, Tomcat actually started up okay. It did. So next thing I'm going to do is start a browser. Okay, so I'm now going to connect to the Syncope console. So if you recall, the core is the core functionality. The console is a web management interface for the console or for the core. So I'm logging on as the administrator. OK, so this is the main uh, user screen you're greeted with in the console. Uh, so I'd, I'm going to step through a number of the different um, items. So the first uh, thing of interest is the schema. So the schema allows you to basically define attributes for users, roles, and memberships. Um, for each of these three things, you can define uh, three different types of attributes. So I've got one predefined here, which is a surname. OK, so a user has a surname, it's a type string. Um, you've, you can define a derived attribute, which uh, combines attributes using an expression. Uh, and a virtual attribute is an attribute that's not actually stored in internal storage, but that it's actually stored in the back end. And it, um, you've got attributes for roles as well. Uh, so I have an attribute predefined here, so it's the role description. And then membership, so a user can be a member of a role, and a membership is an attribute corresponding to that relationship. OK, so th your schema uh, defines what kind of attributes are allowable for uh, users. Um, OK, so let's look at configuration. So this allows you to define various policies. So you've got account policies and password policies if you want to um, define requirements on, uh, say, what kind of passwords the users can create, and so on and so forth. You can see all the requirements here. Um, reports, so this is to do with uh, auditing. You can define what events are audited. OK, so let's look at resources. So I've got some stuff predefined here. So if you want to communicate with your backend identity silo, you need to define your con ID connector. So I've two previously defined here. Um, so I've got one set up for my Derby backend and my Apache DS backend. So before I get a look at them, I'm just going to start up uh, the relevant stuff. OK, so I'm starting Apache DS, and I'm going to start Derby as well. OK. OK, so if you just look at our connector configuration, um, this is our uh, connector for Derby. So um, you basically specify a number of different properties. Um, so I've got a, I de define what the column is for names, passwords, status, so on and so forth. Uh, you can check that it's actually working. It is working. You can define capabilities. So you can assign a one phase or two phase operation to your connector. So a one phase is basically it. it pauses while it's interacting with the back end, and two phases allows you to uh, basically, say, create a new user and then continue on processing and wait uh, without having to pause for a response. 
Um, so here's my DS connector. I'm just going to test this as active as well. It is. So basically, this is a bit more complicated um, because in this case, we're uh, synchronizing roles as well. So defining your uh, what context to synchronize users and groups and so on and so forth. OK, so this is your kind of raw information that you use to connect to your backend. So now you need to create some uh, mappings. So these are, these are called resources, and we have a resource per connector. So if we look at the DS connector, uh, sorry, the DS resource, um, so you, we define user and role mappings. So mappings are basically how do you map between your internal uh, stuff in Syncope and your backend resource. So I've got three user mappings here. So I'm mapping the, user, the internal username of a user to the account ID of the backend, um, similarly for password. Um, and then I'm mapping the uh, user schema surname to the SN uh, attribute in my directory backend. And similarly, I've got some mappings for roles. I'm mapping a role name to the account ID, so uh, the role of the backend. And I can map um, my description attribute of my schema to the description uh, Attribute of my uh, in the LDAP backend. Okay, so I've defined my connectors. I've defined how you map users between my internal storage and uh, and the backend. So next thing we need to do is to import the data into uh, Syncope. So we do this via a task, and in particular a synchronization task. So I'm going to create a new task for both entities. Uh, so create a new task. I associate the resource with the task. I give it the ability to create new users, et cetera, et cetera. I save it. I'm going to run it. So you can uh, schedule it. So you can run on a, on a scheduled interval, but I'm just going to execute it once. And then I'll create my derby task. So I'm associating, associating this with my derby resource. Um, And I'm going to execute this. I'm just going to check my DS task. Yeah. OK, so you can see the status is coming up as success. So hopefully this means that we now have a list of users in Syncope when we do. Um, so if we look at uh, the user Alice. Um, so Alice has a surname of Smith. So this was um, synchronized in from my DS backend. Um, and Alice is associated with two roles, an employee and a boss. Um, so if we just briefly bring up Eclipse, I'm going to look at the DS backend just to show you what this actually looks like in the backend. So I'm using Apache Directory Studio plugin here. So here's my users, Alice and Bob here. And here are my groups. So as you can see, Alice is a boss. Alice and Bob are employees. Um, and if we look at roles, we now have two, two new roles which have been imported, so the employee and the boss role. So if I click on employee, um, the description has been imported from the back end. And obviously, this is a really simple mapping, but you can do a lot of incredibly complex things. I can see what users are associated with the roles. So for example, here are Alice and Bob, they're employees. And if I look at boss, then I see here is uh, Alice. OK, so I'll switch back to my slides. OK, so that was a brief demo of Syncope. So um, as I mentioned previously, uh, we have a 1.1 .1 release coming up. Um, one of the key features of this release is roles provisioning. So like I just described there, uh, propagating roles to your backends and synchronizing them in. Um, so the uh, version of Syncope that I showed you there it was actually based is a 1.1 .1 snapshot release. Um, I think we're, we're down to single figures in, in JIRA of stuff to fix. So hopefully, it'll be going out in the next few weeks. Um, OSGI support is another new component, thanks to um, Jean-Baptiste Donofre. Um, so this will give us the uh, ability to deploy uh, Syncop in an OSGI container like Apache Craft. Uh, we've upgraded to use Apache Wicked 6. And then two kind of key things I want to talk about a bit more is uh, REST API upgrades and also the introduction of the CXF uh, web services stack. OK, so in the 1.1 release, the REST API of the 1.0.x set of releases has been completely redesigned, um, mainly by a set of committers from Talent. 
Um, so basically, they've been redesigned to apply RESTful be best practices. So I give some examples of RESTful best practices here. Get doesn't modify an object, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so in the 1.1 release, we will actually have two REST APIs because um, we want to create a kind of a smooth migration path um, for 1.0.x users. So we have um, we have two APIs which are exposed uh, under different paths, uh, and in the 1.2 release, we'll be dropping the old uh, the old API. Okay, just very brief introduction to Apache CXF. Um, Apache CXF is one of the leading web services frameworks. Um, it's one of the most successful Apache projects. It supports uh, standard specifications to StackWiz and JaxRS. It supports a huge number of protocols, SOAP, Gorba, et cetera, et cetera, large number of transports. Um, it's got a really good uh, web services standard support. Um, so for example, I work in security a lot. So WS security, security policy, WS trust, uh, secure conversation. Um, and also, it has really good uh, support for RESTful security stuff like OAuth and XML security. OK, so in the 1.1 release, the new REST API will actually be powered by CXF. Um, so previously, Spring, uh, the Spring framework and Spring annotations were used. And now we're, we've switched to using JAXB and JAXRS annotations. Um, so the cool thing about this, from even just from a purely Apache point of view, is that we're replacing a non-Apache project with an Apache project. Um, but it, so it's an even cooler thing is that the full power of the CXF stack is now available to Syncope. So um, the kind of sky's the limit in terms of the new kind of functionality that we could offer based on the on the capabilities of CXF, like supporting new security functionality, maybe OAuth, SAML, STS, etc. Um, so I'm really interested in hearing if anybody has any thoughts or um, on this kind of stuff. Um, let me know, maybe talk to me after the talk. OK, so very briefly, I'm going to give a second demonstration. Um, so basically, the, this demonstration is how you might use Syncope with a third party application, in this case, Apache CXF. Um, so I have a standard web service, which is double it. So you basically just, you're doubling a, a, a number. Um, so the client sends a request to the service. Um, the client also sends the username and password in the header of the request. Uh, the CXF endpoint is configured with a custom validator which uh, uses the REST API of Syncope um, to validate the user and returns the response. Um, and also, for authorization purposes, it gets the roles of the user. And it, um, basically, it has an assertion that states that only a certain role can execute an operation. Um, in this case, it's boss. OK. OK, so this is a new standard Maven-based project. Um, the code is online. Um, I'm going to create a set of tutorials based around CXF and Syncope um, and give de details of how you can run these tests. But if we just look at the. So there's an example here. So here I have a client request. So as I said, it's a double uh, request. So I'm doubling, requesting to double the number 25. I'm sending username password in the security header. So here's my user, Alice. So if you recall, we imported Alice from our uh, DS backend. Um, so this goes to the service provider. And the service provider is configured with the validator, as I said. And here it is accessing the uh, REST API of Syncope. So it's basically, it calls this method here. And this returns a Boolean true, uh, indicating that the uh, supplied username and password are correct. And then if you just scroll down, there's a second test which uses it for authent authorization. Uh, OK, so here I've requested. Um, so auth authentication has succeeded. So here I'm getting the roles of the user. So this via this uh, get request here, and here is the response from the service provider, and you can see here that the role name of the user Alice is boss, and I've configured in CXF to uh, authorize the user if the role name is boss. So as I said, I'm going to write a, a set of blog posts based around this, uh, which will explain how to run these tests in more detail. 
Okay, so finally, um, just a set of links. Um, if you're interested in Syncope or identity management, feel free to get involved. It's a new project in, in Apache, so um, I'd say there's a fairly low bar to committership. Um, so feel free to get on board, download it, file some bugs, write some patches. Um, yeah, so I guess I'll take any questions on my talk or on Syncope or on CXF. Uh, yeah, if you uh, look at the Con ID project, you can uh, have a look at it there. It's um, so yeah, th there's a framework basically, which is an API, and you can plug in any number of bundles that implement the connector. Do you know for the SAP HR? Connector? Not, to, no, not to my knowledge. Oh, yeah. How uh, how many bundles do you support? In terms of. <laughs> I guess, but not to my knowledge, but I mean, try it and see, I guess, you know. Um. <laughs> Yeah, I think so. Um, if you look at the sync of wiki, there's um, the REST API is pretty well documented. Um, yeah, as far as I know, it, it is that is available. No, it, it just queries the internal uh, storage, so you'll need to have synchronized that into Syncope, unless it's a virtual attribute. So a virtual attribute is stored; it's always stored in the backend, and it's never imported into Syncope. Is there anybody else? What does the actual configuration in CXF look like when you're restricting that service to that role? I'll show you. Yeah. Okay, so CXF is a, it's a web services framework, so there's like a, a million different ways of uh, of doing of doing things. So here I'm using um, it's a class called Simple Authorizing Interceptor, and it simply maps a method name to uh, a role name. So I've got like double it is my method in my WSDL, and I'm saying boss is the uh, is the required role. Um, so again, that's 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 like a simple interceptor for simple use cases, but you can do you can plug in. Yeah, yeah. Anybody else, or is that it? Yeah. How is the workflow It's yeah. It's it's. At the moment, it's only really working for users. Um, but I think rel rel approval is is on its way. Um, it just allows you to kind of formalize, like uh, maybe the creation of new users, or if you want to formalize how users transition between different states. Uh, you don't have to use it if you don't want to. Um. Okay. Thanks for listening.